So I'm, I'm what I'm telling you these things. It's because it's I'm telling you uh, what makes a, a poet, and uh, some. Sometimes I, I used to imagine that, that my heart weighed about a thousand pounds and that I was dragging it behind me with huge chains. Um, sometimes I, I would uh, imagine that my mind was like, you know, you ever see a rabbit being chased by a fox or a coyote and the rabbit is zigzagging to get so not to be uh, grabbed by the jaws of the, of the coyote? But I, I used to feel like my mind was going along like that, zigzagging, that kind of stuff. And uh, whenever I was in my twenties, uh, uh, early twenties, I used to. It was like I was waiting for that day to come, where that final thing would trigger me to uh, commit suicide, because I was I was very uh, I had suicidal thoughts. But the. Uh, you know, because I didn't really uh, have anything to lean on spiritually in those days. I was just uh, ready for ready for anything. I, me and my buddies, that I was hanging out with about three or four other guys, and, and whenever we'd, we'd meet, eh, we'd always say, well, I don't care if I do die, do die, do die. And we didn't. We'd say that because we didn't care. And I know I didn't. So the... the um, but the, it was all... All these things that were, were, were creating a poet... Because, like, I'm. Uh, that's what. Uh, that's what uh, uh, it does. Th those kind of experiences. So, whatever. Um, whenever I did, uh, I wrote my first poem. In uh, I guess it was 1993. And I had just uh, celebrated five years of sobriety, but it was only two years after my accident. So, because of my accident, I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't lay bricks. For a couple of years, because I was recovering from the, you know, you just don't recover from a broken back and and things like that. Because I've got chronic back pain, I've had it since my my accident, but I deal with it good, and I'll I'll, I'll talk more about that in a few minutes. But uh, and so it was two years after my accident, so I was very poor. Uh, at the time, I was just squeezing by, just, you know, li living hand to mouth, more or less. I drove an old, uh, beat-up uh, car that, uh, and if I wouldn't have been buddies with a, with a mechanic in, in, uh, in Lossville, Quebec, well, then I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even been able to keep a car in the road, but, but he used to fix my car and just charge me for parts, more or less. Whenever I could afford it, he'd, he'd charge me, you know, $25 or something, whatever. But. Um, so that was, uh, th that's the way that was going. So I celebrated five years of, uh, of sobriety, and I, uh, and I wanted to make it, uh, something worthwhile. I thought I could uh, afford to take my family out for, for supper. So I, I wrote a poem instead for them, for my daughters. I have daughters and, and I have granddaughters. Eh? I don't have any uh, sons or, or grandsons. But I, to I wrote this poem uh, to uh, acknowledge my uh, five years of sobriety, and it goes like this. Uh, year by year, I walked my trail of tears. My spirit slept during my drinking years. Then one day, when I stood barefoot on a road of gravel, it came to me that I make the path my children would travel. I asked myself, who has a life to be thrown away? Who would want the hearts of their children to hurt someday? The example we set deserve no cries of cheer when our spirit sleeps year by year. <laughs> 